I'm actually really surprised. Yeah. Oh! That just happened. I am duo. Hello everyone, I am Duo, and welcome back to another video, and today we are back on the Existence server. This is episode number 26, and today we are in Extinction Park. Now today, I'm actually going to try something a little bit different. I'm actually going to try and do the building on camera. I know, it's absolutely insane, I've never done anything of the sort. Well, I probably have a few years ago, but I just don't remember it, to be honest. Okay, so we're gonna have to- oh dear, Groover. Um... That's, uh, tough luck, but today we are going to be working on our PvP arena. Now, if you are unfamiliar with this, I started this in episode 9 or 10. I think it was episode 9, but I don't remember. It may have been earlier, actually. But I have this massive underwater area, you can't really see it very well because of, well, YouTube. But it is completely stark and forgotten about. Oh well, Groover isn't really doing too well for himself. And I want to do something with this underwater area, I don't want it to go to waste. Originally this was a complete crater, Sam patched that bit up when while he was still playing. But then down here I sort of left this untouched. So that's what we're going to do today, we're going to make use of this underwater area, and then once that's done, this PvP arena will be officially finished. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is uh, reframe this thing, because we can't have this flat underside. Oh god, I'm going to drown. Yeah, probably going to need respiration for a project like this. I haven't really built anything underwater since I joined. Um, don't think I've done- oh, there's mini air pockets here. I think I'm going to keep these air pockets here. Purely for the purpose of those fighting here. Because yes, I will eventually have tournaments. I'm determined to get tournaments running under here. Um, and, well, throughout this arena. And if they wish to, they can jump in here, fight underwater. I think it'll be pretty cool. It's basically the purpose of this entire build. But anyway, let me get this done. And when we come back, we will continue. Alright, and welcome back. So, we are over the lake. Uh, on the surface of things, it doesn't look like I've done much, but when we drink this night vision here... Oh yeah, so I've got this whole PvP arena surrounded and there's a road sand block. There, it, there is a... I didn't even realise this was here. Okay, interesting. So, I've gotten this all built up. Hang on, let me place a wall torch. Just so you can breathe again. Um, but now, I guess it's time to add the finishing details to this place. At the moment, it's really just a stone formation in the water here. So, I think first is lighting. That really needs to be done. Otherwise, people won't be able to see what they're doing or anything at all. Uh, and in PvP, you need to see where the player is. Otherwise, you won't be able to do much. So I think the sea lanterns will go in hidden areas, like over here. Also I want to do some air pockets, assuming that they do not, the opponents do not have water breathing. Uh, which the chances are is they don't, so I want to make it just so there's air pockets around here, but they also sacrifice being cornered by another player. I think that will be a pretty cool prospect, I'm not entirely sure yet though. Um, I'm gonna have to see how it pans out, um, but I do already have a couple of air pockets. Um, they don't look the best, but they work for what they're meant for. Uh, in fact, that they were not intentional in the first place. They were. Um, let's, let me just block that off. So yeah, if you haven't gathered already, all of these are going to be blocked off. It's merely just so people can actually see the formation of the build. Um, that that won't help much. Okay, let's uncover that a bit. So, I can't really tell because we have night vision on right now, so I think I want to get the detailing and stuff done fairly quickly, just so we don't have to work without night vision for very long. Um, and there is a spot here that I can cover up. Okay, so what type of blocks will we be using in this underwater area? We're a bit limited because we can't use full blocks under or no, half blocks, 
Because, well, they'll sort of do that, and we don't want that. That'll look ugly. We will be using these, however, for the air pockets, which is kind of helpful. And let's re get a rebreather. I want to craft these into polished, because I feel like that they would contrast enough to the point that you would actually see it underwater. Obviously, I have night vision on. This may wear out uh, quite soon. Yeah, I've got about just under four minutes of it left. But I want to make some uh, polished andesite. Um, let's get another breather. Uh, some mossy, cracked, and regular stone bricks in this area too. On the very bottom, I would like some uh, what would look like prismarine shards sticking out out of the bottom of the um, thing to make it look like. There was some sort of Atlantis thing here, but it sort of got caved in over time. I do think that would look kind of cool, and oh god, yep, there's a cave here, and I know there's also a spider spawner under here as well, uh, so we may use that as, um, I don't know, but we may actually make use of that in the actual arena, make them just float up during combat. I think that will be quite amusing. Not sure if I'll actually put it into effect just yet, but I want to sprinkle these across the floor to make it look like there used to be some sort of organized structure here, but it sort of just got collapsed over time. And I feel like the brick sort of adds to that same effect and polished andesite, because it makes it feel like there used to be something here and then it just got waterlogged. So let me know if you like this new format, I will be only doing this for smaller base builds, so for the massive things like the portal room we did last episode. Obviously I will stick to my time lapsing format as usual, but I just wanted to try something new, and I feel like this would be a good buildy tutorial type thing to integrate, because let's face it, I don't have a building tutorial series just yet. Uh, I may incorporate one of those in the future, maybe when I have a bit more time on my hands, but for now I will be sticking to existence only. Oh no, my night vision is wearing off. This would actually give a good indicator as to how the lighting would look, and if I need to add any more. So it is nothing too subtle, you can still see the details within the wall. Overall, not too bad, I mean... It's still very dark, you can barely see a thing, but I don't know, I'll probably add more and this would actually help with me knowing where to put the water, or no, not the water, the w sea lanterns. So in places like that, so I think I may put more detail around the lanterns to one, draw attention away from the actual block itself, and two, oh, I don't want to block that off, I want some light seeping through. But just so that the details I put in aren't put to waste in the fact that you can't actually see them. But I do want to scatter some details in and around it. So in places that where there is no lighting. And towards the surface I may add a few bits as well. Um, and let's put a bit of andesite there. Get a bit of oxygen. But underwater building isn't as bad as I expected. But it's still a pain, let's face it. Um, and this might make a very subtle air pocket. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. And it helps the light seep through a bit better as well, which I kind of like. So, I don't know, I'll keep cracking at this, and when I'm happy with the level of detailing, then I will come back. Okay, so we're back with our third progress update. As you can see, I've added these prismarine spikes sticking out the wall. I've added considerable extra amount of um, uh, detailing, especially around the sea lanterns. And good thing I have these torches, otherwise I would be screwed. And at the bottom, I've even added a prismarine spike. I think these look pretty cool. They look very blocky, but there's not much I can do about it, because one, there isn't prismarine stairs or slabs, and two, well, we're underwater and it'll just look like an ugly air pocket. So, uh... The ground, it doesn't look too great, so what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, cover it in sand because I feel like gravel doesn't add enough colour for what we're aiming for here. Because I'm aiming for um, sort of like an underwater 
sort of thing. <laughs> that was a terrible explanation, but the point is I'm going to try and get some sand under here so that I'm actually getting a bit of colour underneath here. Um, obviously I do have the prism ring, but I do feel like the sand does work really well with all of this, so that's what I'm doing. Um, and I'm also going to mix in some upside down sandstone stairs, some sandstone slabs, and more sand. Obviously, yeah, I can't do the half blocks because, but I can do them upside down, which does have its own unique texture. What it does is it basically allows me to flip the underside of the sandstone upside down, just so it's facing upwards so I can actually see it. So I do feel like that's a very nice texture to be using. I do use this technique in my base a lot as well. And I am back and let's take a look. Already you can see that the arena below or the secondary part of the arena is much more noticeable now. When you go down here, uh, you can see basically everything. Oh, I got a bald spot here. I need to patch that up. But overall, this looks absolutely amazing, considering that we only had to use full blocks, nothing more. I absolutely love this place, and I feel like this would be a real nice place to PvP in. Okay, so now all around the place, we don't want to be constantly placing uh, torches to replenish our breathing. Instead, I'm going to have a railing. Am I? Oh yeah, I'm flying, that's why. Okay, I was getting a bit confused for a second. Um, okay. So I want these to be one like that. So a single one on their own. So these air bubbles are going to go in completely random places. It's uh, not really concrete where they go. But I feel like these are just nice to have dotted around and nice and convenient. Because then they won't have to constantly place torches in order to stay alive. But... They aren't too intrusive, or at least as intrusive as I thought they might be, which is really nice. Um, so then when, when they're running out of hunger, they go, oh no, go under here, and then they'll be completely fine. So I guess I after this I can call this PvP arena completely done. I started this project months ago, uh, back in episode 8 or 9, and finally I've got it completely finished. So now I'm going to go put up a message on Discord asking if anyone wants to fight in there. And if we can get someone, then I will roll that footage right now. Okay guys, so I have a little bit of an experiment to try. We're gonna do this in the middle of spawn town just to make sure that we don't lose all our stuff. So just so we know where we are. Um, so I've got a bunch of fireworks on me, not sure if this is going to be quite enough. But we are going to fly directly upwards until my elytra breaks. And I want to see what Y level we get to. And the reason I'm doing this is so we can improve our mileage on our elytra. We need to get to 6.9 thousand kilometers. We're currently at 2,291.49. So we've got quite a distance to go. And I feel like doing this constantly will help improve our elytra rate. And it will mean we don't get lost in the same time. Because all we will have to do is fall straight down and die and pick our stuff back up. So it should be fairly simple. Let's get on with this. Oh my god, we passed the 10,000 mark. This is absolutely insane. Look at our elytra durability. Oh my god, I, I think we can make it to 30,000 if we really push this. Oh, I'm gonna have to do this some other day, but 10,000 blocks in the air. And we still got a stack of firework rockets still. 
So that's 10 kilometers added to our total flight. Um, which isn't great, but that's still immaculate that we made it this high. Oh, we ran out of fireworks, so we've got less than a stack left. Let's keep pushing. Oh, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and there we go. Screenshot, nope, screenshot, there we go. All right, so 13,400 blocks in the air, roughly. Okay, how much elytra juice? Oh my god, we still have 299 durability, that is insane. Oh my god, so we could potentially get up to 40,000. I'm going to have to try this some other day when I have more fireworks, but anyway, we're diving to the ground now. Okay, we are approaching regular coherent ground level, and we're falling pretty fast, so we better make sure that we... Uh, oh, my player is back in view now, and there we go. Wow, okay, we're back. And how much hit did my elytra take? Uh, not too bad. Yeah, I think I definitely am going to try this again. So, wow, over 13,000 blocks in the air. I expected the, uh, the elytra to run out of juice before the rockets did, so... I'm actually really surprised, yeah. Oh! That just happened. Okay, let's get over to the rest of my stuff. There we go. All of it's back. Okay, I, I thought I'd gotten rid of all the negative momentum. I guess not. Where's my boots? Are they up here? Don't have any rockets anymore, so I'm sort of busting up the tree to look for my stuff. Aha, there's my boots. Okay, got everything back. We'll try and set a record next time. So, I apologise, today's episode was a bit janky and effortless, but I did feel like I needed to try something new. So, anyway guys, I'm going to end off today's video here. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and maybe even subscribe for more. But anyway guys, I'm Duo, and I'll catch you all next time. So, I will see you then. Bye!